It's been a whole heck ton of while since I reviewed a GPU. This sort of video used to be the bread and margarine of my channel. For a while, like half my videos were about GPUs. This was back during the scalper pandemic when GPUs were forbidden fruit. You couldn't get them. And if you did, you were probably using them to mine crypto or scalping them or trading them for toilet paper. You know the story by now. It's a, it's, it's been a rough couple of years for an old PC gamer like me. This is also around the time that I started leaning heavily into off the shelf products like the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally and mini PCs and the magical world of lower spec games and indie games and older games. But I do miss tinkering with PC parts and seeing the fanciest face melting PC graphics. I have an itch to scratch and that's what we're going to do today. Ah, that's better. This is the RTX 4070 Super and we're going to do a good old fashioned GPU review. The reason that I think this is relevant now, um, I, I mean, if, you, if you've been following the launch of the 50 series, it's a bit of a situation going on over there. Paper launches, crazy prices, hardware issues galore, and a pretty impotent boost in performance to justify the price or the fire risk. So in light of all that, and considering that the last generation cards are plentiful and lots of them are on sale now that the new thing is here, I think if you wanted a GPU, it probably makes a lot of sense to consider a 40 series GPU rather than pay twice the price for a 50 series GPU without much to show for it. You know? Yeah, you do. Because despite the 50 series being a thing, the 40 series is just as relevant today as it was over two years ago. And I'm going to prove it by playing some games. That doesn't prove anything, you say? Well, shut up. Where's your video? You're probably not even making a video right now. I am, so I win. This model of the RTX 4070 Super that I have here is the Asus Dual 12 GB version. This was provided to me by Asus for the purpose of review. They had no say in the content of this video, they didn't get to see it beforehand, and all opinions are my own. It is rather spiffy looking, as you can see. It's got this sort of techno dark grey style. Metal backplate with some nice lines and shapes drawn on there. This part over here is transparent black plastic and the shroud around the fans is plastic, but it looks nice. And they put the word space over here. Space. It literally ju just says space on it. The RTX 4070 Super is an Ada Lovelace architecture GPU with 184 4th generation Tensor cores to power that DLSS3 goodness. 46 3rd generation RT cores, it clocks up to 2475 MHz but it has an OC mode that lets it boost up to 2505 MHz. We get 12 GB of GDDDDR6X RAM on a 192-bit memory bus. They also say Auto Extreme Precision Automated Manufacturing for higher reliability. What is that you ask? I have no freaking idea. And let's take a look at the PC that we're going to be running this bad boy in. This is an Asus pre-built, the G16CHR. That's where I got this GPU. It came with this pre-built. The idea with this PC is that it's going to become my new filming PC and the new test bench machine for when I do PC stuff like GPU testing. This thing has an Intel Core i7-14700F CPU cooled by a single fan tower cooler in a B760 MATX motherboard. It has 32 gigabytes of DDDDR5 RAM clocked at 5600 mega things per second. We get a 1 terabyte PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD, a 750 watt 80 plus gold power supply, and it comes in this fancy futuristic cyber case with a tempered glass side panel to see all those pretty sparkly RGB lights inside. And we also get some RGB on the front in this uh, pretty nice looking angled accent around the air airflow vent there. Uh, speaking of which, there are two exhaust fans, one at the back and one at the top. We've got some USB-C holes and USB-A holes up here on the top. And of course, the most important part, no true gaming PC is complete without the essential headphone holder. Since this will be my test bench PC, I intend to upgrade it with some faster RAM, more storage, and a, a bigger, nicer cooler for that CPU. I might even transfer the components to my old case. I haven't decided about that. And we're already like five minutes into a GPU review and I haven't even played a game yet. Uh, what am I even doing? Let's smash some demons. And it's a puzzle platforming section. Damn it. I wanted to smash some demons. Yep, this is Doom Eternal, and this is a really platformy section that I'm in right now. A few little fights here and there, but nothing super impressive. Whatever, this'll do for a benchmark. 
This is running at 1440p native, so no DLSS, with the Ultra Nightmare graphical preset, ray tracing enabled, and I ended up with 203 FPS on average with 145 FPS 1% lows. Now, this isn't a new game, but it's my video and I wanted to play Doom Eternal, so shut up if you have a problem with that. This frame rate is totally fine for my display here. I'm running this on a 27 inch 1440p display with a max refresh rate of 165 hertz and free sync premium. So I don't need more than 165 FPS to get the most out of my setup here. Not that I'm expecting to get close to that on every game. I think if you have a 40 series GPU, you should probably be trying to squeeze out visual fidelity through the RT features rather than shooting for crazy high FPS, especially in graphically demanding games. But Doom Eternal is one of the games where I do want very high FPS. And it's nice that we can get there, even on the highest possible graphical settings without DLSS. And here's a new one. This is King Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. I've been loving this game. I'm not really that far into it, but I am totally sucked in. I, I actually missed an upload last week because I wanted to play this instead of working. <laughs> I'm running at 1440p with quality DLSS and the game has several graphical options but they have a super high-end option called experimental and it gives you a warning that it's intended for future hardware but apparently a 4070 super counts because I chose this and it ran fine. I don't know if you can tell in the YouTube video but this looks absolutely incredible. The first Kingdom Come Deliverance was a graphical monster when it came out. I remember seeing the screenshots and the videos of the game and I was like, what? How? How can a game look this real? Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 isn't at quite the same level. It looks amazing, but it doesn't feel like a revolutionary leap forward the way CKD1 felt. I'm pretty sure they're using an upgraded version of the same engine, which is A-OK -okay with me. I'd much rather a game look good not through the graphical engine or whatever, but through the art and design, and have it run well on weaker hardware. This game runs great on the Steam Deck, for instance. Nice to have the options we need to tailor the experience to our hardware, whatever it is. In Black Myth Wukong, I was feeling a little too ambitious, I think. I started out with the highest graphical settings in the cinematic preset and also enabled full ray tracing and turned off frame gen. And it, it worked, but the frame rate wasn't good. And there were some big frame dips. I don't need ultra high FPS in this game, but I need it to at least not feel stuttery. With frame gen on, it did feel way smoother. The, FB, the FPS was better and a, a little bit of latency, but I could deal with that. But there was lots of that frame gen weirdness, like these crazy high FPS dips and then some glitchy stutters and that weird frame gen ghosting that happens when you pan the camera around. I wasn't having a good time like this, so I ultimately decided to go with the cinematic preset at 1440p with quality DLSS because balance looked pretty gross around the edges of the character, no ray tracing, and no frame gen. And this looks great, almost just as good as with RT, but without the slow performance in the stutters. It's silky smooth now. I got 75 FPS on average with 50 FPS 1% lows, which for me in this game is great, considering how good the game looks. The game itself isn't really my jam though. I gave it a chance and I, I just don't like it. I don't like the setting or the combat or the structure of the game. I know lots of people love this game. That's why I bought it and I'm glad they're liking it, but I just found it, it's just not for me so I probably won't keep playing. And it's not because I, I suck at it, just to be clear. <laughs> Definitely not because of that. Next up, here's some Dragon Age The Veil Guard. This is 1440p with the ultra graphical settings, ray trace reflections and ambient occlusion turned up to full and DLSS set to quality. And this is running great. I got 71 FPS on average with 45 FPS 1% lows. However, that's not really the whole story because there are some situations where there's stutters. Those situations usually only happen when you enter a new area and I think that's because the game is loading textures and I'm running this off an external SSD so I can't say for sure if that issue is caused because of the game or my external drive. So I'm not knocking it for that just because it might just be an issue on my end. This game does have frame gen, which you can use if you need it, but honestly, this is running so well, I'd never bother. I don't know if I'm going to continue in this game, to be honest. I, I like it. I like the cutscenes. I like the graphics. I like the characters. But the overall game structure is just really linear, and the exploration is really shallow, and the combat is basic. So it did, just doesn't feel like the kind of RPG I want to sink a lot of time into. I just, I, I don't love the game, but I, I do want to see how the story plays out. So we'll see if I come back to this one after Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, of course. Because this is a 40 series GPU and we get access to DLSS 3, I figured I would be doing a disservice if I didn't test out the flagship game for when it comes to Nvidia tech. 
which is Cyberjunk 2077, specifically Cyberjunk with the path tracing setting, which is arguably the most demanding graphical video game task that you can give a GPU. And here you can run the game with all those settings cranked, including ray tracing, but when you enable that path tracing, you're going to be down at around 30 FPS on average. The game is playable like this. This is a console-like experience, and some people don't mind 30 FPS in, in exchange for shiny graphics, but I wouldn't want to play like this. Enabling frame gen more or less makes it playable for me. With path tracing, we get up to 50 FPS on average, and I personally prefer a bit more than that if I were actually playing through the game like this, but as a tech demo, this feels amazing. However, I should let you know that the footage that you're seeing isn't quite accurate because I was recording on the PC itself and the video was captured before the frame gen is applied. So it's, uh, it looks like a lower FPS than it actually is. It was a lot smoother for me than it looks here. And as you can see, it does look absolutely incredible. I made a video about path tracing when it first came out and it's no less impressive now, like a year or so later. You will notice that my 1% lows aren't amazing like this, down at like 19 FPS, and I'm, I'm not sure if there's some weirdness there because of the frame generation, but because the game definitely did not feel like there were dips down to 19 FPS. It felt very smooth, like a solid 50 FPS to me. Actually, it probably felt like more than that because I'm on a free sync display. And finally, I wanted to test an esports game, so I figured this was a perfect chance to give Marvel Rivals a try. I'm running at 1440p with quality DLS and the Ultra preset, and it ran beautifully. I ended up with 97 FPS average and 44 FPS 1% lows, and it, it felt awesome. <laughs> Silky buttery smooth. Obviously, if you wanted a super high refresh rate performance, you wouldn't be running with the Ultra settings. I just wanted to see how good the game looked, and it, it, it doesn't look like mind-blowingly amazing or anything. It has a cartoony art style, so I'd probably lower the settings a bit to get that FPS up if I was actually playing this for real. But even still, almost 100 FPS on average is more than enough for me considering I'm not a competitive player. This is my first time playing this game ever and I didn't know what I was doing. I know I'm supposed to be doing stuff that helps my team, but I was just trying to stay alive and not embarrass myself, even though I probably did. I did have a great time though. Really fun game. It's super flashy and all over the top action and it's snappy as heck. The game loads real quick and going back and forth between the game and the menus is just instantaneous. I was really impressed with the whole package here. So, should you buy an RTX 4070 Super? Well, I mean, it really depends, but if you want to save some money, the entire 40 series has come down a lot in price since launch. And now that the 50 series is around, you can find sales on the 40 series GPUs all over the place. Yeah, a 50 series GPU sounds nice and you get new tech to play with, but I've watched like all the reviews for the 5090 and 5080 and 5070, and depending on the game, the performance boost might be worthwhile, but it might barely even be noticeable. And in my opinion, definitely not worth the price difference between the 40 series compared to the 50 series. Check out my boy Iceberg Tech's review of the 5070 if you're interested in the 5th gen because he does a great job comparing it to the 4070. A lot better than my garbage video to be honest. But if I was buying a GPU right now, considering the price and the performance of the 50 series, I would be buying something like this 4070 Super. No question. And I was impressed at this Asus Dual version. At no point did it get too hot. I think the max temps that I saw was in Cyberpunk and even there it didn't go above 68 degrees. And it's not at all a loud GPU. Asus boasted about the sound and they weren't wrong. I was impressed at how quiet it was even under full load. So yeah, if you're looking to get a 4070 Super, I'm giving this Asus model a thumbs up. What, you don't believe me? Boom, there it is. However, if you're a real enthusiast, if you actually want to play through Cyberpunk maxed out with path tracing, then you're going to want more than what a 4070 Super can give you. I mean, it's a 70 class GPU. That's like upper mid-range, and it's not going to satisfy you if you expect the best. This is more than enough for me, but I showed you the performance, and if that's not enough for you, then get something more. I still think going for a 40 series GPU makes good sense, like maybe a 4080 instead of a 5080 for instance, but as a lover of tech, I can see the appeal of the new thing. Either way, I hope you found this information helpful, and I'm curious to know, are you thinking about getting a GPU right now? And did you like this video? I, do you want to see me make more PC gaming and GPU type of content? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or don't if you didn't. That's it from me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.